WCW, and you know, through your time, they're the best, and all of a sudden, they're not the best. So a lot of political stuff, a lot of maybe bad booking decisions, a lot of just craziness coming down from Turner, uh, standards and practices getting involved. I mean, there's so much going on. What did you think about just the backstage, even politics or the goings on of you see the 83 weeks of dominance and then you're seeing the, the collapse or the Titanic kind of sinking? Well, you know, I, to be fair, to be fair, for the longest time, I always kind of had this youthful innocence about me where I would do interviews and people would ask me about it. And, and I would honestly and legitimately say, man, I just didn't see it. And I don't understand it. And it, it doesn't make sense to me. And it doesn't compute. As I get older and the perspective on life in general has changed and my experiences have fed into that. And I know what's real uh, as far as what happens in certain circles. And I can look and I can see I've benefited from the fact that I was low on the totem pole. And what I mean by that is a lot of that stuff didn't touch me in the same way as it would a main event guy. You know, right. um, I'm going out and I'm having great matches every night with people like Crowbar and, and uh, Hoovy and Ray Mysterio and Kidman and those guys. Uh, I'm working with Lenny Lane and Lodi, you know, and I'm great and enjoying every bit. Of Alan Funk and Mike Sanders and these guys. And so we're in a different sphere than somebody that when having to negotiate the egos that might be involved in a main event between Jeff Jarrett and Hulk Hogan. Right. I mean, that's just the truth in, in, in of the matter. So all I have to do is show up at work, be told what to do, make a, make a good living, being a part of something that's really, really special. And I also don't have the pressures of an Eric Bischoff and wondering, okay, how is this business going to uh, make money and how are we going to keep it a business as opposed to it being sold off to a different corporation or being parsed out or just ceasing to exist? I didn't have to worry about the pressure of how are we going to get these uh, ratings up a couple of points next next week because I wasn't the main event guy. I wasn't the main event guy. Uh, but looking back, I can see where some of those things were starting to happen. I can see where some poor decisions were possibly made. But I also think that WCW overall was just a victim of a hyperspeed business. And what I mean by that is this. You go back and you take the worst Thunder shows, the worst Nitro shows, even when WCW was quote unquote in their dying days. And I guarantee you there's a lot of wrestling companies that would kill for that today. Yeah. They would kill for those same numbers. You look at the houses we were drawing at the time and you ask impact or you ask, uh, you know, NWA or you ask uh, even AEW if they would like to have the same crowd we had the last time we were in the, you know, the, the New Orleans Silverdome, you know, Superdome or something. And I guarantee you that they're, what the answer would be. So I look back and, and I don't think it was the doom and gloom that it was. It was just we were a victim of our own success. It was such a contrast compared to what the, the really, really, really good years were that it looked so, so bad in comparison. But if you compare it to where the business was 15 years later, Anybody would take that, man. They said, give me that business model all day long. Yeah. So it's a matter of perspective. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please help me out and like this video. Then click the subscribe and get notifications buttons so you don't miss any of my latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Facebook at The Hannibal TV for more live streams and videos. And while you're at it, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Hannibal TV.